Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Let's stand to our feet and rejoice because he has set us free. Child wants to go, and you can't afford it. 
go to Sister Beth or Hazel and talk to them, and we'll work something out because this is definitely going to be an important thing. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to East Florida Church of God. Good to be back in God's house this morning. So thankful for all of his many blessings, uh, everything he does for us. Thankful for another day. Thankful for just an opportunity to be in his house amongst his people uh, and the freedom and the liberty that we have just to worship him. And he is truly worthy of our worship. Um, at this time, we're going to ask our ushers, if they would, to come forward uh, so that we can continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Uh, multiple ways that you can do that. Uh, they're going to be passing around the offering bag, and you can donate or give your tithes and offerings there. Or you can uh, visit our website at www.eastfartofcog.com and give there. Or you can just simply text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 84321. Brother Brent, would you bless the offering? If you haven't already, please um, stay connected with us and follow us on social media. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages and, and our uh, church website. That will help you stay connected with us uh, when we're away and help you stay up to speed on all the things that we have going on here at East Florida. Uh, we also want to make mention we're still looking for um, some ministry volunteers, some um, nursery volunteers on a rotational basis for nursery during Sunday morning worship and Wednesday night. Also opportunities um, to volunteer with our toddler and children's ministry. And if this is something you'd be interested in, if this is something you can do, uh, want to do, or, or just want to talk about it, please uh, see Sister Patsy Roberts or Sister Haley Tolleson and talk to them about that. Also want to make mention we still have our uh, parking lot fundraising project going on. Uh, we're hoping to have this uh, wrapped up soon so that we can completely uh, redo the uh, the parking lot, fill in the cracks, seal it, restripe it, all that good stuff. And we're getting close. Uh, we, we we need about fifteen hundred dollars. Um, and so if if you can help us out with that, and we can get this thing wrapped up, we'll get it done. Uh, so please continue to pray about that, donate towards that. We're getting super close. You can um, give towards that in the offering, uh, and they paid on there, or you can give it online. So remember that. Uh, we have a group text prayer chain here at the church, and if that's something that you would like to um, be added to so you can have visibility to that, you can text at 3FA867 to 81010. Did I get that? I'll say it one more time. Is it up on the board? Nope. All right. You can text the at symbol at 3FA867 to the number 81010. If you need that information, come and find us and we'll give it to you later. <laughs> um, don't, don't forget, we have a, a new Bible study that's been going on for a few weeks now. Um, every Monday morning they meet at 930 in room A109. If that's something that you'd be interested in, if you've got the availability, remember that and come out and be a part of this Bible study. Uh, and also want to make mention uh, about our midweek connection uh, meals. Once a month for the next six months, we're going to be having uh, a meal, uh, and it's going to be sponsored by a different ministry. There's no cost for this, but they will be receiving donations, and all of the donations that they receive, that they take up that night, will go to the ministry that's sponsoring the meal. The first midweek um, meal will be on Wednesday, April 10th, and, and we're going to be serving food from 5 to 6 on these Wednesdays. And so the first one will be April 10th, and this one is sponsored by a senior ministry. And speaking of seniors... Uh, the luncheon has been moved from April 16th to Tuesday, April 23rd. The senior luncheon that was originally scheduled for April 16th has been moved to Tuesday, April 23rd. Um, ladies that are interested in going on the ladies' retreat in September, uh, please see Sister Betty Turner. She get your name on the list where they can uh, make sure they got you down, plan accordingly. And also, ladies, we are having a Mother's Day brunch on Saturday, May 4th at 10 a.m., um, so mark your calendars for that. If you have questions or want some more information, please see Sister Betty Turner. Last announcement that I have, God loves you, and Jesus is coming back soon. 
Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. As you stand back to your feet to worship with us, get out of your pews and meet and greet for just a moment as we worship in the fact that he has set us free. Well, he set me free, yes, he set me free, and he broke the bonds of prison. Are you glad to be free in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Father, we just ask that you would come into this house this morning, that you would set our sight upon you, that you would set our hearts upon you, Father, and that you would meet us right where we are. We love you. We worship you, almighty God. We invite you to have your way in all things as we submit our will to yours. In the mighty name of God, we say, amen.
Rich is I. For rich is I need not, nor man's empty praise. Thou my inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only, the first in my heart. I Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful this morning that God sees us in our broken state and chooses to love us anyway? That's what this next song is all about. Sing it with us and worship Him this morning.
love this right here. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. I'm strong when I am weak. I will be free. Your power at work in me. I'm broken gracefully. Will you give the Lord praise in his house this morning? Thank you, almighty God, that you see us. Lord, you love us in the midst of our brokenness. You don't expect us to come to you perfect, but you see us right where we are. And you love us anyway. Thank you, Father, that just as you shut the mouths of the lion, back whenever Daniel was in the lion's den, still today you shut the mouths of of the lions, you shut the mouths of the power of darkness that comes against us with the lies that they bear. And this morning, you let your spirit speak in this place, almighty God. Be free to move and speak to the hearts and the lives of your people in the way that they need to hear. There are no words that I can say that will take the place of your spirit moving in our lives. So, Father, we invite you to come and do what only you can do. To make a way where there seems to be no way to part the waters. To silence the voice of darkness as it comes against us. And to set your children free in this place this morning. We love you, almighty God. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. Amen.
It's found in your name. I have a strength found in your grace. Your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. Come on. Will somebody declare this? Make way through the
Almighty God, I believe in your name. I believe in your sovereignty. I believe. Yes, I believe. No matter what the circumstances are, I still believe in you. You've never failed me, and you won't start now. You are the same God. 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 Yes, you are the same God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Somebody needs to say that over your situation this morning. You've listened to the lie of the enemy too long. And just because it doesn't look like what you want it to look like does not mean that he is not still Jehovah Jireh, still making way, still making provision. It does not mean that he is not still Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace. It does not mean that he is not still Jehovah Nisi, the God who reigns in victory this morning. Do not let your faith be ruled by your sight, but let it be ruled by the truth of who God is. That he is still the one true king of kings and lord of lords. That he is still making ways this morning through the water. That he is still holding solid your hand in the midst of the fire and shielding you from the fiery darts of the enemy. He is still the same God. He is still the God of exceedingly. He is still the God of the extraordinary. Don't let your present circumstance dictate your level of belief. Because in that, you will never know who God truly is. It doesn't always feel good. It doesn't always look good. But when God is in the midst of it, it is still perfect. And it will, as it did for Job, turn into a latter rain that is more abundant than the former. So hold firm, child of God, that he has not left you, nor has he abandoned you. He has seen every tear that you have cried. He has held you in every midst of brokenness that you have walked through. He has heard every scream and cry of distress. And he still loves you. And I still believe as his word declares and promises that he is working it all together for the good of those who love him and faithfully serve him. So as the pastor comes this morning, can we just declare, declare it over your spirit this morning in the midst of whatever disbelief you may have, that I believe in you. God, I believe in you. Yes, I believe in you. God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Yes, I, I believe. Lift your hands one more time in this sanctuary and give the Lord some praise. Come on, magnify him. He is still the God of exceedingly. He is still the God of abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. While you're standing with me, I want you to go with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 14. Oh, everybody knows what's happening tomorrow. And I've heard people say, well, now, Pastor, do you honestly believe 
that that is a message from the Lord. I honestly and absolutely do. And what's going to happen is these words and these things are going to catch people unaware. I don't believe that the earthquake that just happened in New York that shook New Jersey and New York and Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. was happenstance. I believe all this shaking is God trying to deal with America. And first of all, trying to deal with the church. Glory to God. Because how many of you believe that we are at the precipice? We are on the threshold of going home. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to pick up, pack up, and peel out. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 14. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake and then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many and because lawlessness lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold but he who endures to the end shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. I want to go back up to verse 3 and look at that, this question. Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? I want to minister today on God's end time agenda. God's end time agenda. Glory to God. You say, well, you're just preaching that because of the eclipse. No, I'm preaching that because we're right here at the end. Amen. We are right here before going home. Glory to God. And we need to know what's fixing to happen. Amen. Glory to God. Stretch your hands this way and let's pray. Father, Lord, as we humbly come before your presence this morning, I want to thank you for the spirit of God I feel in this place. Father, help us to understand your word and to know and to see the signs Lord, as you told them in Luke chapter 21, Lord, that they would be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars before that great and terrible day, Lord of the Lord. We pray, God, that you would show us. And Lord, let us understand, Lord, your end time agenda, what you are doing. And help us, Lord, as you told us time and time again in your word to watch and pray and be ready for no one knows the hour or the day. Father, I pray, God, let this word go forth in power. And glory and hit the mark this morning that you have sent it to do. Lord, I pray that it would hit the, the bull's eye this morning. God, and not returning to you void. But Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would touch hearts, that you would save souls. Lord, that you would heal bodies, that you would destroy strongholds in this place today. And Lord, we give the praise, the glory, the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Look, glory to God. You may be seated. Glory to God. If we just look around at what's going on in our world, wars and rumors or threats of war, nation against nation, false Christs that are arising, false prophets, and an apostate religious system that is within our world today, amen, where entertainment and popularity and fame and fortune is proclaimed and salvation is not even mentioned folks we can clearly see that we are in the end times and in the last days 
before the coming and the rapture of the church. Come on now. I want to tell you there are famines. There are pestilence. There are earthquakes in diverse places. The weather seems to be all out of sorts nowadays. Glory to God. Amen. When it's supposed to be winter, it's summer. And when it's uh, summer, it's uh, glory to God. We have cold spells. I don't know what winter we're in and just come through whether it's a dogwood or stump or, or whatever it might be. I don't care. Glory to God. I want, I want spring to be spring. I want summer to be summer. I want fall to be fall. Amen. I want the seasons to be the seasons. But I understand, Lord God, that these things are not, go, uh, they, they are going to get out of whack before the coming of the Lord. And we're living in a time where people just don't care and have no compassion at all one for another in these days. You look around, you turn on the TV, and TV shows have become more wicked than ever before, making a mockery of everything holy and trying to make every sin seem normal and acceptable today. Lord God, they're always having some form of sin that the Word of God calls an abomination on these TV shows uh, trying to shove it down our throat uh, that this is just the normal way of life today. Listen to me. It may be the normal way of life for the world, but it shouldn't be the normal way of life for the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, we need to live by a different standard. Amen. Listen, society is immoral. Amen. Leaning to its own understanding, its own desires, and fulfilling their own lust and mocking God today. People are listening to everything except the word of God. Folks, we are living in the end time. Look at your neighbor and tell them we're in the end time. Glory to God. But how many of you know God has an agenda? God's got a plan. I like that. What is an agenda? Let me tell you what an agenda is. It's a list or an outline of things to be considered or done. It's a plan or a program. Let me tell you, God knew how bad things was going to get. He even said it right here. Jesus told us how bad things are going to get. But in the middle of everything getting bad and all hell breaking loose, God still got a word for the church. God still got a work for the church. And God still got glory and power for the church. In the midst of all of this garbage going on, God's going to have a church that's going to be raised up in power doing things for the kingdom of God. Oh, somebody needs to help me in this place today. I want to be a part of that church. Amen. I want to be a part of that church that's going to be full of us that minister the word of God. Power of the Lord. And God said, I've got a plan. When you see all these things taking place and you see all these things happening, don't let it shake you. Don't let it tear you up. Glory to God, because I have a plan. Glory to God. And I want to show you, and I know this is not an exhaustive list of the things that God's got going on, but I want to show you four things right quickly. Glory to God, I got 20, I got 19 minutes, so you just hang on. Glory to God, I think I can get them done in 19 minutes. Praise God. Listen, four things, amen, that's in God's end time agenda. Number one, there's an end time shaking. Say it with me. There's an end time shaking. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 through 29. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only those unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and all for God is a consuming fire listen to me uh, Paul here Lord God the right of the Hebrew uh, uh, author here was summarizing uh, what the prophet Haggai had already said uh, in chapter 2 uh, verses 6 and 7 uh, amen he was trying to let them know again uh, amen what can be shaken will be shaken what cannot be shaken will not be shaken but there is a shaking that is coming uh, not only only to this world, but to the church, and those things that will not hang on will fall off. But listen to me, hang on with everything you got, amen. Because listen, we have been given an unshakable kingdom, amen. In this world, listen to me, hold on, 
Don't let go. Glory to God, don't get shaken loose. Uh, yes, there's a shaking uh, that's coming. Uh, there's an end time shaking. Because listen to me, the Lord's wanting to find out who's real and who's not. Let me say that again. He's wanting to find out who's real and who's not. Because there's folks sitting in churches across America today claiming one thing but living it another way. Listen, we got churches today that are ordaining folks in their pulpits. And let me just go ahead and tell you right now, glory to God, I don't care what it is. If it's sin, it don't need to be behind the pulpit. If God says it's an abomination and God says it's sin, you get mad at me all you want to, but I think I'm going to stand on the scripture. I think I'm going to stand on God's side. Come on now. Amen. It's sin, and that is not that is not a place that God is going to bless. That is not a place that is going to see miracles happen because it's an abomination before God. Folks, there's a shaking coming, and these churches that are claiming to be churches but are not are about to be shaken loose in Jesus' name. There's an end time shaking. The world is shaking at an alarming rate. Nations, institutions, economies, families, individuals, the earth's environment, the heavens themselves, even the spiritual realm, in every dimension and sphere of life, we are seeing powerful waves of shaking amen, that are disrupting the course of life and taking away our false sense of security in earthly resources and compelling us to return to the creator of the universe, glory to God. Why is God doing it? Because God's trying to give us another chance to repent. Trying, God's trying to give us another opportunity. Glory to God. They say, I haven't been living like I ought to. Listen, God's tired of, of church playing with him. Glory to God. I get moved to this church house. You come in here, glory to God, two and a half this year. I come in here and sing Kumbaya to you this morning. I come in here to warn you. Glory to God, because God's trying to speak to America. I got to listen. I heard all the prophets and preachers here lately talk about what's fixing to happen tonight. And I got to looking at all the cities they say that they're about to go over. And I even got to looking because they said where the 17 come and then where the 24 comes and where they cross. There's a little city up there. Lord God, it's called Rapture. Praise God in Illinois. Amen. And I got to look and I wanted to make sure, amen, that that was absolutely fact. And you know what I found? That it is absolutely true that where X marks the spot, there is a little bitty old town. Little bitty. I mean, it don't have but a few uh, citizens in it. Glory to God. Amen. Just, a, just maybe a few buildings. It's kind of like Viola in, in Warren County. It ain't got but a few uh, buildings in it. But they changed the name. Years ago, uh, from Bugtown uh, to Rapture. You say, well, that, what's that got to do with anything? Because listen to me, folks. Uh, when God speaks from heaven, um, amen, it's a clear message uh, of what he is trying to do. Uh, amen. When he sends this over the cities of Nineveh, he's trying to tell America, and he's trying to tell the church first, uh, it's time to repent. Uh, I've sent my messengers to you. I've sent my word to you. It's time to repent and quit playing church because the rapture is about to take place. Uh, it's time to be ready to go and Meet him, praise God. Well, you're just trying to scare me. I hope I scare the hell out of you. Because we sit on our pews and we sit on our backsides. And we go through the motions of church long enough. shaking that is upon us. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. Right now, right now, right here. God has allowed every one of us to have a chance. Amen. 
the teaching of the church of Satan. We're talking about the church of Satan. Now, the church of Satan is a great nation. And now, let me tell you something. Our nation's not going so well because the church ain't going so well. under the sun getting his way. Lord God, God said, I'm sending the Jacob, not only this world, but I'm sending it to the church. And those who are barely hanging on, Lord God, those who have barely got a grip, when that shaking comes, are going to be shook loose. And the real is going to be real and the fake is going to be exposed. Glory to God. Listen to me. Oh, hallelujah. There's two purposes for this session that I found. Two purposes. First of all, it's to judge the people of this world for their sin and rebellion against God. Well, God is love. But you understand me. We're going to stand before him as a judge. Come on now. Glory to God. There's people out here in open rebellion against God and this shaking. Glory to God. He is judging the people of this world for their sin and rebellion. And the second purpose is to refine believers so that they'll be purified to become his remnant that is ready for Christ's return. Folks, I'm going to tell you, the words that are being preached from the pulpit today, from churches, amen, from men and women of God that are spirit-filled, God is sending that word to us to get us ready to meet him in the rapture. God's still moving. Why? How do you say that, Pastor? Because Wednesday night, glory to God, I got called over to the youth side Wednesday night. Praise God. They were over there and they was having class. And I got called. Elijah come and got me and said, Pastor, you need to come to the youth side. And I went over there. Glory to God. And they was over. Brother Sister Tiffany was over there and she was ministering. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And said, anybody in here want to be saved? And there was eight young people that raised their hand wanting to be saved. And they come forward. And I stepped up and I led them, led eight of them in the sinner's prayer. I'm telling you, we're still in a time of miracles, signs, and wonders, praise God. We're still in a time of revival, praise God. Amen. But we're also in that time of shaking. But I want to be in the middle of what God is doing in these last days. I saw eight young people give their life to Christ. But not only that, I watched those same young people, after they got saved, turn right around and lay hands on a young boy, a new young man that walked come in on crutches. Glory to God. And he said, and they were talking to him about being baptized. All eight of them want to be baptized. And this young boy, he said, we can put a garbage sack over it. And I can be baptized. I said, well, why don't we just go ahead and pray for you to be healed? That way when we do have a baptism, you don't have to have that cast on. Glory to God. They got around him. They laid hands on him. Sister Beth got on her knees and laid her hand on his leg. Glory to God. They prayed. I'm telling you, the fire fell. Oh, my God. And when she got up from there and they quit, he looked at her. Sister Beth said, was you squeezing my leg? Was you rubbing up and down my leg? She said, no. She went over there and she put her hand on his arm and said, that's how I touch you. He said, I felt the pressure all the way up and down my leg. I felt fire going up and down my leg. I'm telling you, folks, we're still in the midst of the power of God moving. Oh, glory to God. And in the midst of it, God is bringing a shaking, and the real's going to be real, and the fake's going to be fake. That's just the beginning. Because not only is there an end time shaking, there's an end time awakening. Glory to God. Just like those eight got saved, I'm telling you, revival's coming. There's an end time awakening. Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. 
then times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah, for he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things. Get that. The time of the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. I want to tell you, folks, as we respond to the shaking with repentance and wholeheartedness, amen, and devotion to God, he will prepare us, amen, to take an active role in the coming last day's revival in which God's sovereign glory is going to be revealed. I want to be a part of that revival. How about you? I want to be a part of that supernatural move of God in these last days. Listen, in this end time awakening, Lord God, there's going to be supernatural movements that are going to be characterized by miracles, healings, salvation, financial provision, prophetic visions, uh, renewed holiness, uh, powerful worship, uh, and strong uh, discipleship. Uh, T.O. Osborne, Bob o. Osborne said this. Uh, he said the purpose uh, of a spirit-filled life uh, is to demonstrate the supernatural power of our living God uh, so the unsaved multitudes uh, will abandon their dead work, their dead gods, uh, to call upon the name of the Lord and be delivered. Uh, you know what I want to see? I want to see the Holy Spirit feel and flood this place, place uh, amen, and revival start here and turn Sparta upside down, praise God. I want to see the miracles that Jesus talked about. Lord God, in Mark 16, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Amen. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak with new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poison, it won't hurt them. They'll be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. If you got a problem with that, take it up with him. Because he said they were going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. He said these are the signs that follow them that believe. So I've got to ask, if these are the signs following you, do you really believe? That's what Jesus said. These are the signs that follow those that believe. Glory to God. In Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 18. And in the last days, God said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I'll pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike. And they will prophesy. Folks, I'm telling you, we are in the day of awakening. We are in the day of the outpouring. Amen. As Joel said, and as Peter repeated, we are in that last day awakening. I want this church to be a part of the outpouring of what God is doing. Hallelujah. T.L. Lowry. I don't know how many of you remember T.L. Lowry. Praise God. T.L. Lowry said, if we as God's people are to live in the supernatural and be awakened to the things of God, number one, we've got to receive what God has revealed to us through his word. Number two, you have to know that God has planned for you to walk in the miraculous. Number three, you have to know your position of kingdom dominion and walk in it. And number four, you have to take your position of, of power and authority over Satan. He said in these last days, uh, God is calling forth uh, a new breed of people uh, through whom he can manifest his power and glory, glory. God. Don't tell me God's not doing something in this day. Look at all the outbreaks uh, of revival on the college campuses today. Even on the University of Alabama. wants to save Alabama. That's what he wants to save them from. That's what he wants to save them from. But in a long string, you and I, we've got it all wrong. We're in the wrong position. We're in college. Why? What's God doing? 
I'm telling you, God, he, he hadn't forgot the church. Come on now. He hadn't forgot the church. He just waiting on the church to let him in. He's sitting at the door knocking. He's just waiting on the church to let him in. Glory to God. But he says, in the meantime, when the church ain't going to let me in, I'm going to go to the college campuses where these young people, glory to God, in their, in their, in their late teens and early 20s, I'm going to go to these college campuses and find me some hungry folk that want to move of God and watch it spread like wildfire. I'm going to see an awakening come to this nation, glory to God. There's an end time awakening. Glory to God. Not only is there an end-time awakening, there's an end-time harvest. What do you say? There's an end-time harvest. John 4, 35, you know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up, look up, look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. Glory to God. Billy Graham said, glory to God, the evangelistic harvest is always urgent. The destiny of men and of nations is always being decided. Every generation is strategic. We're not responsible for the past generation, and we cannot bear the full responsibility for the next one. But we can do our part with this generation that we are in. God will hold us responsible as to how we fulfill our responsibility to this age. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? In this age. Folks, I come to tell you, we're in a Kairos moment. You know what that means? You know what a Kairos moment is? It's a right now critical moment. We're in our season of possibility with the kingdom of God. Amen. And in this Kairos moment, in this season of opportunity, the Bible urges us to redeem the time, Ephesians 5, 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Folks, I will tell you, God expects us to be about his business, uh, taking and going into the harvest and bringing people into the kingdom of God. You say, i got to get them in the house of God to get them saved? No, lead them to Christ right there in the aisleway of Walmart. they would come to the house of God. They need to be in the house of God. They need to hear the word of God. Glory to God. But we need to be going out in the field. It's ripe. And if we're not careful, it's going to rot in the field. Because we're sitting in church, satisfied with bacon and fries. church to be a part of it. Glory to God. He wants us to be a part of it. And last of all, there's an end time resurrection. There's an end time resurrection. Praise God. What are you talking about? I'm telling you, Christ is coming after his body as a bride. He's coming after his body and he's coming after his bride. I can just see him. Glory to God. He's looking at the Father. Oh, when can I go? Hey, man, that's my bride. Oh, I'm ready. They're adorning themselves. They're getting themselves ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Glory to God, I want to go. I want to go. Father, when can I go? Well, not yet. Not yet. Hang on. Not, I'll let you know. And he keeps looking. And he keeps looking. He said, listen, the only one who knows is my Father in heaven. I don't even know. The angels don't even know. But he said, because of that, you need to watch and pray and be ready. Because, folks, we're we're getting ready to leave this place. Acts 1, 9 and 11. Now when they had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up in a cloud receiving him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said to him, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. I could tell you 1 Thessalonians 4. I could tell you Matthew chapter 24, 36 through 39. And verse 44, I could tell you Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. I could tell you Matthew 24, verse 27 and 31. Glory to God. I could tell you all these scriptures that let us know Christ is coming. Glory to God. I think I'll end 
with him. Matthew 25 talks about ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish. What it's talking about is the men. Them getting ready for the men. Think about that. That young guy and that young girl. What we've got to understand is we've got to understand an understanding of the rapture can be gained from understanding the Jewish wedding tradition. Brother Dale just done a fantastic job by coming back and said, this is you right here, you know it. Now listen. In Jewish wedding tradition, as the young man becomes of age to marry, he builds a room onto the father's house so that there will be a place for him and his bride to lay. He can end up with you. When a young man is ready to get married, he goes to his father and gets permission to go after his bride. When his fa- with his father's permission, he goes to collect his bride. She never knows just when he will come for her. So she has to be ready at all times. When he is near her home, a trumpet is blown to let her know he's going to be there. With a shout, he calls her out so she can follow him back to the room that he's prepared for her. When they get to his father's house, he keeps her there for seven days. At the end of that seven-day period, he goes back with her to her home and claims to the world his rightful place as a married man. Look at the look at the comparison here. Jesus is in his father's house. And he's building a place for his bride, the church, to live. John 14. Oh, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you in my father's house, there are many mansions. Uh, when God the Father gives him permission, Jesus is going to come for his bride. Amen. And when he gets here, amen, a trumpet's going to sound and a shout's going to occur to call his bride to him. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. And the Lord himself will descend with a shout and with a trumpet and with the voice of the archangel. Praise God. And when we meet him in the air, we shall go and follow him to his father's house. And there he will keep us for seven years. At the end of that seven years, Jesus will take us back, riding on white horses. Where he claims to the world his rightful place as king of kings and lord of lords. For a thousand year millennial reign. Oh, come on, church. I'm telling you, there's an end time resurrection coming. Don't know, and I don't know when it's going to be, but this much I know according to the sign, it could happen any day. It could happen at any time. Glory to God, and with everything that's going on in this world, and everything that is being shaken in this world, and everything that has been awakened in this world, and everything that's been done in this world, I'm telling you, God, amen. First of all, before He's even saying anything to the world, He's talking to the church world. Get ready, 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 get ready. Coach your heart. Coach your life. Oh, when you hear that trumpet, when you hear that shout, you are ready to go home. Because let me go ahead and warn you, you do not want to be left here with the car keys and the door locked. I've thought about doing whatever Pastor Phil has done today. I've thought about making a video like when Pastor Phil and I would have made videos how to make it through the tribulation period. And they've got to step back from their church because you know what they understand in there? Not everybody's sitting in church during the rapture. Church 
see stuff in those states just for that and that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. How do you know that? Because look at their life Monday through Saturday. one thing to serve God on Sunday. But what do you do for the rest of the week? What kind of example are we setting for the rest of the week? What kind of words are we using for the rest of the week? I'm going to tell you, you might be fine if God comes back on Sunday. I'm coming after a bride without spot, blemish, wrinkle, or any such thing. Search the lost of the saints. Find that lost one. If there's a repentant one, bring him to me. And if there is, I have made a way. If you confess your sins, my word says, he is faithful. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you plead with him, he is faithful to cleanse you. There is an awakening that is coming. There is a harvest that is coming. And I'm clinging to him after my bride that is coming back to me. Be ready. Stand to your feet and let's pray. Folks, God has an agenda. He's got a plan in these last days. I've come to tell you there's nothing that the enemy can do to stop it. There's a shaking. There's an awakening. There's a harvest. And any minute, Christ could come back to this earth. Lord, but here's the, here's the awesome part. I thought I knew how I was going to do this altar call today, but I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost just steps in and changes everything. Every head bow, every eye closed. No one looking around, no one moving unless you're moving toward this altar, please. You may sit here and say, I'm saved. God bless you if you do. But I want to ask you a little, a little more serious question. If the rapture happened today, do you know with 100% assurity that gravity would lose its hold on you and you go heavenward home? Do you know? Or is this something some unresolved issue in your life that's going to keep you earthly. This morning, folks, search your heart.
says, go on. You cannot say with 100% guarantee, I'd go to see him now. I want you out of your seat on this altar right here, right now. Because I've come to tell you, you can know. You can know. John said in his book 33 times the word know, known, or knoweth. We can know we're ready. We can know we're going home. So if you need prayer, if you need to put something under the blood today, come on. Step out of your seat. If you don't want to come by yourself, grab the hand of somebody beside you, in front of you, behind you, wherever it is. Grab their hand and bring them to this altar this morning. I want to be ready for the rapture. I want to be ready for the rapture. My God, give me some people that feel praying for these young people. Sweet Jesus. Sweet.